Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the After Her Show. I'm your host, the one, the only, Daddy Dilfer Taylor. And with me, as always, you know him, you love him, the host of the Down to Her podcast, Jerry. What's up, my guy? Yo, it's a uh, happy hump day to all you guys out there. I got my man. Uh, we got a couple people in here. We got a couple mans. Here. Couple mans in here. I'm a fan. Cu- couple bros in the studio. We have the dapper Don himself, Jake Sanders from Crownheads, once again returning for the 10th time. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. And also another return guest who's been on several episodes of the After Her and Down to Her podcast. We have Adam from Smokers Haven. What's up, Adam? Yo, yo. What's up, everybody? And you look dapper as well, too, <laughs> my say, guy. Do you say dad? What do you say, daddy what? The daddy Dilfer. Do you say that all the time? Oh, yeah. I try to. Many, many <laughs> I times. did not realize that <laughs> from last time. It's hilarious. I love it. You got to let people know that this dad uh, is a Dilf. Yeah. Uh-huh. If you're into that. Big dick. Is he wrong? Big dick energy. Is he wrong? Huh? Is he wrong? Is he is he, is he not, not a Delph? I'm not gay, so how would I know? I d- he did say big dick energy, so I like it. Short guy, BDE. I I like to <laughs> like put that out there in the universe. Yeah, we're drinking, sorry. <laughs> and I'm funny too, so it helps. Yeah, you're a good guy. I Thank like you. you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you're that. You're nice, nice, naive, and uh, you know he's take, a nice guy. T- take me home to mother. You know, I might not do her as well. So <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I used to tell all the <laughs> I used to tell all the ex girlfriends that one never panned out. For all you, for, so what are we, wondering. What are we smoking on, Caleb? All right, Jake, why don't you tell <laughs> us since, since you brought all the drinks? <laughs> We're all smoking the same thing here, Jake. Yeah, You're the no, one that works good. for the fucking company. What are we smoking? No, it's good. So uh, if you didn't know, I work for Crowned Heads. Um, You've been living under a rock. Uh, yeah. Yo, who do you who do you who do you work for? Crowned Heads cigars. And, okay, okay. And right. Osgener family cigars. We we don't mention that very much, but we do. So, um, but we have the Four Kicks Mule Kick. 2023 limited edition um very very cool um awesome box jerry's got the box up there so it's actually a picture um uh well not really a picture but it's uh the painting of the ecuadorian flag the, because it is ecuadorian sumatra wrapper leaf last year we did uh the mexican flag i don't know if Jerry's camera can pick that up, but he's got a box. It, it's up, up here yeah, in yeah. the corner. It's the Mexican San Andreas. Yeah, so it's a Mexican flag. Mexican San Andreas was a rapper last year, so we're doing the Ecuadorian flag this year for Ecuadorian Sumatra. It has Dominican binder, Dominican and Nicaraguan fillers. Comes out of EPC, Ernesto Perez Carrillo. Um, very, very tasty. Medium body. I think uh, this is the best year probably in the last four years, in my opinion. So... I got to say, it smells delicious. I'm already just picking up some cold draws. The room smells good with all the cigar smoke going, so you can tell we're in for another treat. The Dominican tobacco in this really adds like this like toffee, caramel, like mocha kind of sweetness to it. And and then there's that Nicaraguan spice on the back end for me. So mm, that fucking Nicaraguan <laughs> spice, baby. I thought he was going to say fucking licorice. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, it's giggity. The, the cigar is smacking, as uh, some of the kids would say. Clapping cheeks. Clapping cheeks. All right, speaking, speaking of clapping cheeks, this is a great segue, because the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the first story I got is um, Xavier Howard from the Dolphins is uh, rumored to have his fourth uh, baby mama all at the same time. Jeez. So Damn. four girls. Congratulations on the sex, Mr. Howard. Yeah, four times. That's awesome. Uh, four for four. Pull out. <laughs> like, jeez. Maybe this guy should stop having sex and just get dome. You just pull how many, out. How many kids does he have already is what I'm wondering. I don't know. I didn't look that up. I just, <laughs> I just thought we could make some funny jokes about this guy. Just uh, First of all, Nick Cannon cheeks. is entering yeah, the Yeah, I was going to say, he's like the Nick Cannon of the NFL. <laughs> what is he, trying to fucking compete with Nick Cannon? Antonio Cromartie. Yeah, there you go. yeah, another one of those legends. So apparently... Uh, pull-out so, game weak. Weaker than me. This guy's got weaker pull-out game than me. Bruh. That's for sure. Uh, Bruh. You Bruh. idiot. I'm going to have to... I should DM him and be like, are all these kids made in 30 seconds or less? <laughs> inside joke if you're a fan of the after her show um but yeah uh apparently he's got some ugly text messages with some of these baby moms and he's saying uh get an abortion and i didn't want to have a kid with you anyway so uh yeah, not too happy about becoming a dad this is like uh 
It's like an episode out of Ray Donovan. Do you ever watch Ray Donovan? Yeah. Like the original like first scene of Ray Donovan, first episode was like him fixing the basketball like NBA player because they were trying to get his sperm or whatever. <laughs> Do you remember that? Little Drake situation there with the condoms. Yeah, it was and wild. The hot sauce. Yeah, it was wild. Dude, it's uh it's all show business. That's the NFL for you. These guys are out there just slinging dong. <laughs> <laughs> just slinging dong. Yeah, they don't. They don't care. They're just spray, they're just spraying that baby batter everywhere. Guys, <laughs> wrap it up. Fucking one liners over here, man. I'm getting good. Ah, I this, this is I work on it. You guys think I'm working all day from home, but I'm really doing this yeah, stuff. It's a mustache. <laughs> oh yeah, it is, it's the muzzy. I hope you guys like that. Yeah, Tom uh, Selleck us. is really happy right now. All the great muzzies. Jerry's got a good one going too. Yeah. Uh yeah, this is all I got. I'm working on my mullet mostly, but yeah. uh Caleb's working on the mustache and I feel like it's a great team. She got like the Morgan Wallen thing going on. There you go. Wasted oh. on you. <laughs> all right. Another thing that's wasted <laughs> is this uh video that we're gonna pull up. Um if you're spending any money like these uh stupid kids are, you're definitely wasted because this Gen Z fashion, ugh, terrible. Cat ear hoodie, Balenciaga, 2200, suck my dick underwear, Doug club, gave it to me for free, Rick Owen, banana cut with the yeeks out, thousand and some chains, steroid boots, 1500, glasses, 700, steroid boots. You thought you stunned with that shit, didn't you? With the yeeks out. You got a whole bunch of bullshit on. I hate your outfit. I hate your fit, bruh. This is. Yeah, those bruh. kids, those kids thought they were styling. Stupid as hell. This is insane. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> How's insane. that even a fucking thing? Adam, you should get the suck my dick fucking boxers. <laughs> $200 boxers. I like those. I, right, out, right of, out of everything that they just showed, that's probably the fucking only thing I would actually consider fucking wearing. I just, mean, I don't know about the... this. The, the liner says suck my dick. Yeah, like, right? Which, yeah, no. I, just I'd, great I'd pass. capitalism. <laughs> capitalism. It's just great capitalism. All right. <laughs> At its finest. <laughs> Quick question for Jake. I know you are... You're a well-dressed gentleman. You are Jake's. Oh, thanks. I Jake's, appreciate it. Jake's finer things. Uh, yeah, your Instagram finer handle. Finer life. You do dress very nice all the time. You got great shoes, great shirts. You got that awesome six hundred dollar hat. But would you ever waste like seven hundred dollars on a pair of those ugly ass sunglasses or no. uh, fifteen hundred on those ugly ass uh, steroid boots? No. Get Let's it. get to the better question. Get a nice the fuck out of Jake, that much money. Jake, would you wear the suck my dick boxers? No, I don't. No. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. It's not class. I, I don't wear I don't wear underwear, so I, I don't, <laughs> that wouldn't matter for me. Commando is always free. It is you know? like you got you got good jeans. You don't need underwear. <laughs> I don't know that. That's one thing. If I'm going, commando, are we talking about like genetic jeans or are we talking no. about like jeans? No, like, like jeans, denim. like fabric. Like, okay, I'll, yeah. t- I'll tell you what. If I'm ever going commando, I'm not rocking jeans. You don't want to. Worst case scenario, you have a bad accident. You just ruined a pair of jeans, dude. I'm tell. I'm telling you. It. Well, never mind. I won't. It, yeah. <laughs> we'll save that for the. It's comfortable for me. We'll man. save that for it. the after after her show. <laughs> I love it. But things get really bad. It's nice. <laughs> I haven't heard any of those. <laughs> you gotta. You gotta. You gotta pay for the after the after. That's that's like my ring doorbell feed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first one we had to bleep out like five minutes of it. <laughs> The after the after her is when we're all stumbling out of here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, you know, Gen Z, these kids out of control. Uh, hate it. Um, I want to bring this up because we haven't done this in a while, but uh, I got another clip for you. Uh, it's the return of the furries. So let's go. Return oh of the furries. God. Jugs. That's not even a cat. No, that's a horse. So, so they're just identifying as like an animal now? That's what furry is? Yep. So like if you dress up as like an animal and that's like your little your little fetish or whatever it is that gets you off. Yeah, that's like furry. furry no, they're furry identifying fetish. it's no, they're identifying as it. It's not a fetish. No, I, I'm pretty sure there's like entire yeah, that's like, like a, conventions. That's like a thing. Shit. Like on uh uh Entourage, they did an episode with the fucking <laughs> furry fetish bullshit. I gotta say, it's definitely a fetish, because anybody could just dress up and be a horse. You could even do the two-man thing. Someone's in the front, someone's in the back. But to put a giant set of jugs on a horse, you definitely got a fetish. I don't mean to kink shame, but horses don't have jugs like that. No. <laughs> Dude, that's fucking scary looking. That's fucked up. Would you hit, though, Adam? Would Hell no. 
I'd be run- I would be fucking running away from that thing. It's that's like, like a that's Kim- like nightmare fuel right there. It's like a Kim Kardashian if she was a whore. <laughs> yeah. What is going on? Dude, they say I'm it's- in. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Fuck it. Jeez. She does have some curves on the back though, so we didn't see it from the back. Oh we just saw God. the front. Um they do say at some of these furry conventions though, they do actually bring out like full kitty sized pools of kitty litter and some of these people actually do go to the yeah. bathroom in the pool. Yep, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Picture of Uggs. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, we've got a picture of Uggs because we have another new segment, so run out of Gen Z words. Uh, we're going- Hold on, wait, 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 you're just, you're just going to introduce a segment. Well, uh, Jake just- You didn't make s- any kind of- I'm uh, sorry, I a ruined clip, it. or you didn't, make, you didn't make anything to introduce I was, the new segment? I was squeezed on time. I will, Damn. We'll be working on the two, 2000s memories uh, photo, uh, similar to the uh, Gen Z word where I was like with a fidget spinner and the vape. We'll, I'll get an early 2000s one, but That's uh, fine. we're just going to go right into the 2000s memories. Uh, we got a pair of Ugg boots. Yep. Still popular today, but... Still very popular. In high school, yeah. early 2000s, when we were graduating and stuff like that, these Ugg boots at, were everywhere. Every cheerleader. Every <laughs> I love how you just I got, associate them with cheerleaders. I got, Every cheerleader, I got one thing from Uggs, and I will say... Definitely recommend it. Uggs sweatpants are like the fucking most comfortable... Yeah, but. those are those are those are bomb. Uh, fun fact: Tom Brady, spokesman for Uggs. Uh, I gotta say, Ugg slippers, pretty damn comfortable. They're coming back. Please. You guys are saying like, listen, I'm gonna just throw this out there. I'm guilty when I can say uh, I wasn't a big fan of their footwear, but their uh, their down comforters. <laughs> I, I I don't I I, I Amp, dude that's what I use and them things are absolute fire. I don't I don't disagree with you there. Uh, they say Uggs were uh, hunting gear for men in Australia back in the day. That's where it became popular. I could tell why. Really comfortable if you're out there in the wilderness and the desert hunting. Probably want some comfortable uh, sneakers or boots. So I you know I'll tell you what their slippers are comfy. I'm just saying back in the 2000s this was every girl's winter fall winter. Early spring outfit. It was the UGG boots yep. with the with the leggings, leggings and sweatshirt, and the the hoodie, cheerleader hoodie. <laughs> exactly, dude. You how, how many times did you see this? Yeah. Uh, every day right? with the hot. ripped jeans. I mean, it was hot. With the ripped jeans, the low rise. They were low rise at the hip. But there was always a fat chick that had like the outside of them, <laughs> like kind of dented in because <laughs> they were like five years old and she'd been like wearing them like every day for five years they had cleaning services for these things that's how fucking great they were, they were what expensive. are they like emu or some shit like what they the fuck be, are they yeah. made out of she i think they're sheep, sheep. they're sheep, sheep. Yeah. it's like a special kind of sheep only uh only grow like that are raised in australia I yeah. hey that's that's not bad at all compared to the last shit we just saw <laughs> i mean you could probably skin that furry and make some boots out of that costume yeah. <laughs> wow, wow, we were. But yeah, I just, dude, Uggs all over the place, early 2000s. Before, when I was doing this, I asked my wife, I was like, what's an early 2000s memory that you have? And she was like, Ugg boots, high school. Boots with the fur, with the fur. <laughs> dude, that song was popular in high school too, man. Some flow rider right there. Uh, yeah, dude, these Uggs all over the place. Dude, some girls I knew back in high school, they wouldn't wear their Uggs in winter. Uh, they would, I mean, to school. They would bring them in a separate bag yeah. and put their Uggs on in the hallways well, and put their other sneakers or boots like in the locker. Because you didn't want to ruin them. They're like expensive. That's they like, were like, that's what, 200 bucks? That's like yeah. the dudes that wear, would wear Timberlands and they were like totally clean and not fucking. I yeah. mean, those, they're like fucking working boots. And you imagine wear being like a guy. want to fucking scuff them up. Imagine being like a man, right? And like, same with Carhartt. Remember yeah. Carhartt jackets that that became like a fad? And imagine being like these working people and they're like, these motherfuckers, bro. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. We work. Well, that's what's going on with Carhartt now. It's all like the hipster thing. Everyone wears Carhartt there's when they nothing, work a desk job. There's nothing that makes me laugh more than when I see like these girls wearing like the white foo-foo Carhartt hats. Yeah. And you're just like, come on, dude. Yeah. Dude, with they're... The big, with the big bump. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's Big funny. bump flannel Uggs and boot cut jeans. Nothing says fall like a nice foo foo fucking Carhartt hat. Yeah, dude, the fall outfits are here. You know, it's coming up this time of year. We're gonna see a whole bunch of pictures with these coming back. I think they're still in fashion. I guess it started back then, though. That was the thing, high school time. I will I say the one thing that we messed up on at that, like in back then, was like the low rise jeans. The on, only on women. On women. The high-rise jeans, like now, are great. 
It's great. I'm glad that came back. I loved the fucking low rise jeans. Yeah. Oh yeah, you got to see a lot yeah. of whale tail back in the day. That well, was like awesome. the back dimples. Yeah. Is that oh, the thing for like, you? Like, Dogs that out. Was, I mean, dude, <laughs> the '90s were a different era, man. Or '90s, so mid 2000s, like just <clears throat> women. It was very like provocative. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. I I really enjoyed it. It yeah. was fucking awesome. <laughs> well, you had Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera and Jennifer Lopez. It, it was a generation, man. Missy Elliott. I'm not gonna lie. I actually kind of like the the mom jean look. All right, that's why it's I don't mind back. it. That's why it's I, back. I I like actually both of them. Yeah. Like uh, either it, it's kind of like. It's like one of those situations where, like, one's popular. You're like, man, I wish I could have the other. Yeah, I think it's just. I mean, <laughs> granted, this is a bunch of men talking about like women's clothing, but it's. I I think that it works like depending on body types. Like, so like if you have a girl with like a big lower section, Tuggis. Are you saying a fat ass? Yeah. It's yeah. hard. It's hard for them to like find like low rise jeans, you know. Like it's, but if you have like high rise jeans, they're they're good because their hips are up here. Dude, Just what my fiance says. We should design some women's fashion. Just no, like to I, make I guarantee you. I am not you. touching that. Nope. I guarantee you, men designed all those clothing anyway. Uh, that's why I said it. Hundred <laughs> percent. It's where the it's where women buy the most clothes, so you got to get into the women's fashion game. Yeah, I a, look at like the most famous fashion designers; they're all men, pretty much. I, I'm not saying like that's not like misogynistic. That's not sexist. Men design their clothing, and the women love them. I mean, it is what it is. I, I mean, you you can't argue with statistics and what's popular and what isn't. You can't. Did anybody do a retro hill? On this yet? This dude's talking about cigars. I'm talking about fucking sexy jeans. Boots with the fur. With the fur. <laughs> Gave that big booty a smack. <laughs> uh, finish up what so, you were yeah. saying about the retro hail. <laughs> no, I was just saying, like, the retro hail is really good on this. I show. cannot do retro hail. Don't even no. ask me to try it. it I, right. I attempted it. did not work out well. Throw up. We had Caleb do it. He started coughing. It looked like he... I almost it, puked. Yeah, he almost puked on the show, which was really funny. Um, I do got to say, this the sweet smell and taste is still there. Uh, beautifully constructed, once again, as you expect from a Crown Heads product. Like, look at the stack of dimes here. Uh, it's a beauty. It'll, uh, it's it's hard to tap if you like really want to get that ass. What off. do you expect from people living the premium life? What? <laughs> it's a premium lifestyle. Pum premium. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you, you you got it. If you ain't rocking with it, you ain't premium. Terry's on a roll right now. No, no. I just love the premium lifestyle okay. of Crown Heads. <laughs> it's just, Always. It's just the one liners tonight have been great. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, you digging the cigar? Definitely. Great smoke so far. Just, you just. Get, I just will say, uh, third, so this getting this coming from the uh, Las Calaveras, I will say this is a very mellow cigar compared to that. Yeah. Would you not agree to that? Yeah, I mean, it still has some. Pe- it still has that pepper. In it's there on nowhere the near as as, no, as intense as well, when you first start that yeah, Las Cal. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, another quick question on the uh, cigar, real quick. It's an, I know it's an LE, but what's the production numbers on this thing? I think it was uh, like twenty five hundred boxes, um, ten counts. Twenty five thousand so, cigars out there, fellas. Make sure you're getting your yeah, hands on some. Really, really good. Well so, worth it. Well worth it. All right. Oh shit. Let me go get the hat. I got it's conspiracy time. I got to go get the hat. <laughs> All right, we got. So So what? Whoa. Yeah, I don't know. What happened? Nothing. Yeah. I don't know. Jerry's the host. I don't know. It just looks like the camera's froze, but we'll see what happens. I hope they didn't. I don't know who who you got it on yourself. No, no, we're good now. Oh, okay. It unfroze. Okay. Caleb, nice. Caleb's, oh, is. nice There's view the of the premium. Here we go. It's that time, fellas. A one of one tinfoil hat here at Down to Earth Podcast. Woo. What else is new? Caleb is not Great. prepared for the After Earth show. Yeah. Hey, well, hey, Caleb's hey. ready now. Yeah, we're having now. a good time. All right, uh, conspiracy time. So let's uh, play that music, and then we'll get into the clip. And Daddy needs another pour of some bullet ten. So, uh, Mr. Dilfer himself. That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, this week's conspiracy is the uh, 
missing F-35 fighter jet that just happened over the weekend uh, and was found on Monday in north of Charleston, South Carolina. So I got a little clip for you, and then we'll discuss uh, what we think happened and why this uh, fighter jet went down. Get your tinfoil hats out, because the government just lost an F-35 jet fighter for about two days. That's right. According to the government, sometime on Sunday afternoon, there was a mishap involving two pilots flying (laughs) F-35 planes side by side. The one pilot had to eject due to some unknown reason. The second pilot just completely lost track of that other F-35. It had 1,200 miles worth of gas and poof, it just disappeared into what they called a zombie state. Government spent all day Monday looking for the F-35. However, because of the plane's broken transponder, along with this technology to avoid detection, they really had no idea where this plane went. To the point that they set up a missing jet hotline for people to call in with tips. Like, yeah, hello, government, it's me, Kevin. I just saw an unmanned F-35 whoosh by my house. If you hurry up, you might be able to catch it. Now, call me crazy, but if I'm the one calling the shots, I would have told that other pilot, the one that was flying side by side with the now missing F-35, to follow the unmanned plane. Things got even more bizarre when officials issued a two-day stand-down, meaning all planes were grounded for the next 48 hours while they discussed safety protocols and procedures. And then out of nowhere, early Monday evening, they said, well, we found debris in a random field in South Carolina. (laughs) All right, so I don't know what happened here. My first guess is that the other pilot shot this guy down. Kidding. I, that really? definitely did not happen. Oh, <laughs> I was like, my God. No way. That's a little gruesome. But at least the other guy did eject. Uh, he landed safely, taken to the hospital. He's in stable condition. So uh, whoever was piloting the down plane is okay. I love how they ask the pu- the public, hey, uh, have you guys seen this <laughs> fucking uh, jet flying around the world? Uh, no, dude. But here's my suggestion. Ready? Uh you could have resolved this problem with a $30 item called the Apple AirTag. Uh, it, it would literally tell you where this fucking plane was. Uh, I, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but girls use this thing to track down their boyfriends all the time. We're losing fucking... Uh, it's for luggage. Okay, one-tenth of... <laughs> Just a, let's put that out. hundred million not- dollar flights... <laughs> We're, we're losing planes that cost $100 million. You don't think there's anything in this fucking plane that you could just track the fucking thing wherever the fuck it was? But if it was going down, would it even matter? Like, that's my thing. Is like, if it, like, maybe it was like know. a bird strike. Maybe it was like the Hudson again. You don't know. Like, you don't know if it was happening at like 35,000 feet or if it was happening at like 10,000 feet. Dude, we're like talking about the military's 5,000 feet prestige aircrafts. This thing has got to have some kind of capability where you can track it at all times. People well, are very stupid. Well, according to some military info on this plane, uh, it is equipped with a lot of anti-radar elements. So it's not to the point of being invisible to radar, but it is very it's pretty stealthy. It's very stealthy, very hard to find. So that's why when it crashed, maybe they, without seeing the debris, it would be very hard to track this thing down because it's the materials that it's made out of. It would stand a lot of speed, a lot of heat. So it is very hard to find. Um, it Like Jerry said, it does cost $100 million for one plane. So, yeah, you should be able to find this thing. But, you know, when it comes to the military, you got to have your secret materials, your secret planes because, you know, we are fighting wars out there, national security. But the CIA, F-35 yeah. isn't a secret plane. It's been out no, for, yeah. like, what, a decade? Probably like that. So it, it they left not far from uh, South Carolina. It's uh, based in Buford, where they have a squadron air attack training facilities. Um, but I'm going to, like, my conspiracy is, how do you guys think this plane went down? Obviously not shot down, but um, with all the hacking that's been going on in, the like, Las Vegas and the casinos, a lot of people are saying you can hack some planes and a lot of equipment because they're not 100% controlled by the pilots. So much like, uh, what do you call it? Drones. Drones. A lot of these planes are controlled, drone controlled. So the pilots don't have 100% control. So uh, could you maybe hack one of these planes? Ocean Gate. These things uh, are ran by like $30 remote control. Flight Gate. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I have no fucking clue. But these pilots are like the, the best of the best. What's what's the overall cons? Is there an overall conspiracy here? Well, it's not, just the hacking. Well, all right. So there's one thing I said, the hacking. But now Jerry's got me thinking. He just said these pilots are piloted by the best of the best. Now, we've actually seen some uh, numbers from the Army, military, and all like branches 
that uh, recruitment is at all time lows. No one wants to join anymore. They've uh, reduced standards for the best of the best. So a lot of the uh, physical standards that you have to pass to get in, they're lowered a lot, like the push ups, the sit ups, the mile time, uh, chin ups, even. Uh, so maybe we aren't getting the best of the best, and that might be a conspiracy in itself. That- I'm gonna just throw this out there to be a prestige, top notch pilot. You don't have to be able to do a million push ups. Well, I'm ju- telling you that. Well, just the pass to get to that stage. Yeah. Listen, I'm saying, as long as you're a very like intelligent person, you know buttons to hit, and you can fucking triage and troubleshoot like an aircraft. You should be able to handle situations like this. There's there's no way that being able to do whatever amount of sit-ups and push-ups in a certain amount of time should have any effect on somebody being able to push a button in an aircraft. Well, I'd even go... I f- think you want to be very smart, intelligent well, yeah. people. But I'd even go further in saying, like, the F-35, if, it, if this would have been, like, an F-16, like, issue, I may be would understand it a little more but the f-35 and based on like what we're talking about with like a lower um iq level you know per se but um like an f-35 i would assume that the air force would have to have specific people just for f-35s i mean right. these things can these things can hover you're, you're like not they're the be, only plane you're, you're to, not going to be just sending out anybody to fly a, a hundred million dollar plane i think it was a bird strike I think it was a low altitude bird strike. So it's really funny. simple. It's funny. There's a conspiracy theory that says the plane didn't actually crash and whatever debris they found was from maybe a already out of use commissioned plane that they put in a field somewhere. And the conspiracy is that the real plane went to Cuba. It makes no sense. <laughs> There's no tracking, but a lot of people are saying this, the single plane, single pilot flew to Cuba, uh, have no idea what the mission would be, but it's a wild conspiracy that has been uh, thrown out there as well. I don't know why or who started that, but I'm just scrolling through some articles, and that is one of the conspiracies. This one's weird. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know about it. I'm gonna tell you, I don't know a lot. Seems about Seems like pretty like, clean cut, like situation. To military me. planes or anything, that, but yeah, I feel like uh, this is a really. It's not like a irresponsible Chinese military spy balloon military cover up, maybe <laughs> like going over or like lasers, like burning down Hawaii. That's a good conspiracy, though. Oh. Yeah. With the um, the blue, like the blue houses not burning up. <laughs> we actually talked about this unaired episode. I never yeah. got around to actually putting it out. I do have a friend that was that has been stationed in Hawaii, and he said, like, all those are completely false. Nonsense. All, yeah. Oh, yeah, completely. I, I really want to... He really said all those pictures... That. He said all those pictures of, like, how they're saying that the trees, like, weren't fried and, like, everything on the ground was, like, vaporized is, like, completely false. Like, everything was on fucking fire. All right. What else did we... Someone just said something else besides... Oh, the whole thing about the... Un, you know, people not being up to par, up to skill. Uh, the whole thing... Everyone knows, like, the military is going woke. They got all this uh, leftism creeping in and stuff like that. So, like, maybe just some kid who fit the category just is like, I want to be a pilot, <laughs> even though he wasn't qualified. So, and uh, maybe, like, the Chinese air balloon that came into our airspace that a couple months back, maybe just, like, something's going on with the military where standards aren't up to par and the whole conspiracy in itself is that we're, we're slowly falling apart. Yeah, it was, a, it was a suicide bomber. <laughs> oh, no. Sleeper cell from <laughs> World War Two. And and X, what were they called? <laughs> a, a kamikaze pilot just went down. Yeah, like yeah, was just, yeah. All right, all right. We'll move on from that conspiracy. A little far fetched, but kind of new in the news this week. Uh, but we'll move on to the next part, which is another trending topic lately. And I want to ask you guys a question: How often do you guys think about the ancient Roman Empire? Do we think about it? Yeah. The just do we think about it's it? It's the trending you? thing. Everybody's making fun of men. But do you, but do you guys ever think about ancient Rome? No, never. No. I, I, no. I, I would say, considering that I own like one DVD and it's Spartacus, I would say like maybe like a <laughs> decent amount. <laughs> <clears throat> Jerry, do you ever think about ancient Rome? No, never. <laughs> so you guys, this on. is how this ready ready here. I'm gonna just touch. 
The only time I think about like ancient Rome, right, is how my wife gets on my ass all the time about how she really wants to take that honeymoon we never took <laughs> to, to Italy. And that's really about it. Damn, I and think I'm like, I, see, do you think about Rome? Yo, I think about ancient Rome a lot. Like, I just think about gladiators. So you're gladiators. one of the guys that like women's making fun of in these videos. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm like a big history buff. If you don't know, I, I, I dabble in a lot of other things. But uh, I'm a big history buff, and I often think, man, what would it be like living around Julius Caesar, the gladiator days, just being a Roman soldier? How would you even shave? With a sword? Yes. Or, like, or, or how were these Roman bathhouses, and what were like the prostitutes like back then? I just want to know. <laughs> like, there's, there's questions I have. Like, what was it like if you were one of those Roman soldiers that nailed Jesus to a cross? Come on. Okay. Yeah, like, I think about that shit. I mean, the empire did fall. It was one of the largest empires in the world, stretching from Great Britain all the way to parts of Africa into uh, the Middle East. And still failed. Well, like all good things, they come to an end. But uh, here's a little video, and this is a popular trend that's going on on TikTok, <clears throat> Instagram, whatever. How often would you say that you think about the Roman Empire? The Roman Empire? Probably yeah. Maybe like once a month, maybe. <laughs> once a month? Okay. Like occasionally, I mean, there's some months where there might be a really Roman Empire heavy month in my mind, but for the most part, maybe like once a month. But you'll you'll get in a Roman kind of mood. No, it's more just like they built a lot of the shit that we have. Not often, but like you know, I don't knock anybody for thinking about it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> they tried to make fun of them a little bit, but uh, like the old saying goes, "All roads lead to Rome." They perfected the ancient road back in the days. They're still. They're actually, I'm not really yeah. sure what's happening with this trend, but maybe you can explain it a little bit. I think better. they're saying that men try to think about ancient times nowadays because they want to go back to those uh, ancient medieval days where a man could be a man and just go out with a sword and gladiator fight and cut someone's head off or, you know, just be a warrior. Just live I have life to say, I, I don't think I've ever had that thought. What? Me, Once. Me neither. Really? None of you, Adam? You don't want to be a gladiator? Uh, I mean, Spartacus, it's a fucking great show, you know? <laughs> it was a good show, too, by the way. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, I, dude, I, maybe... I mean, I it, it's a cool it's a cool period of time. It's a cool piece of history. There's a lot of good documentaries. There's a lot of good movies, stuff like that. So, I, it definitely, like, piques my interest watching stuff like that. But am I, like, constantly thinking about it? I mean, not really. Do you think it's a thing... Do you think it has to do with, like, all the like the stoic mindset yeah like coming forward and like stoicism and everybody reading that damn book and like yep like it you know gets you you know zen and all that shit or like, like is that is that the popularity i think so or it's like how men two thousand years ago lived as men it's like how do we do that now in the modern age and i, I think a lot about that i don't know it just brings back like that primal survival instinct or just just curious of how people live centuries ago well it wasn't even about like the men back then i'd say i mean the stoic that book was like based off of like marcus aurelius so it wasn't even like just the men it was like the fucking leader of the men you know man just uh jerry not really thinking about this he this is an e2 brutus where i get stabbed as i'm dying (laughs) i think about the roman empire a lot (laughs) you're weird bro do you even know what i'm talking about e2 brutus bruh yeah, I know about Brutus. Okay. I know about Julius Caesar. Okay. You know D- what? If I didn't, had- didn't Brutus Brutus killed that was, Julius that Caesar? Was his best friend. Yeah, it was his best friend. Yep. Yeah, of course, I know that. Well, you, <laughs> well, you, well, you not, well, you not. Thinking, you know, you're like you don't even know that. Like, oh, I have no idea who Brutus is. He killed Julius Caesar. Oh, well, geez. you like you not thinking about the Roman Empire as much as I think about it is like you stabbing me in the back too. Yeah, I feel like Julius Caesar. No dick energy over in the corner of the room. <laughs> what? No, no big dick energy. Yeah, Jerry's like one of those Roman statues back in the day with the little peepees. <laughs> the statue oh, of David. Or the statue David. of David. David. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know what? I also I look good, just a small dick. Yeah. I also think about that too. Why did they make those statues with such little dicks? Why? They weren't erect, bro. <laughs> they were all fucking growers, not showers. I yeah, mean, Jesus true. Christ! Can can I speak for our growers out there? Grower gang, Jesus, <laughs> grower gang. As the podcast is growing, so I appreciate oh, all us uh, grower gangers out there. Gosh, you guys are really helping us. Out. They, they do say there's a reason why all those statues. Are Sorry, there. I I pulled down the fucking uh, the denim man. And I don't have a fucking eight inch <laughs> cock. It's I got to do a little work to get there. Jesus. Uh, uh, fun fact: 
uh, before we move on to the next subject, they do say that all those statues have little dicks because back in those times, they thought if you had a really big dick, um, you were like a mongrel and you weren't suited for a civilized society. I've actually heard this. I have heard this, which is really fucking weird. Uh, if you had a massive dick, they they thought you were weird. They thought you were a savage. Yeah. They thought you were uncultured swine. Uh so for all you guys with little dicks out there, be proud. Because you guys, <laughs> in ancient Roman times, you're living the life, man. Uh, little little dick kings. Yeah. And then it got to England, and then, you know, if you were fat, then you were affluent. It, exactly. Yeah. Really. Oh, dude, who was the Canadian fucking dude? The Canadian, like, you no, know, the mayor of Toronto. You remember that guy? The uh, fucking, Ford. Yeah, Ford, the fucking cokehead lunatic. That fat fuck. <laughs> don't know how that ties to the Roman Empire or how much you think about it. I don't know. It, we just started talking about like fat lunatics in power, so I just thought I would talk about Ford. All right. Well, uh, Grower Gang, there you guys have it. So uh, just if you think about the Roman Empire, let let me know since no one else here seems yeah, to think the, about it. Let the Dilf know. Yeah, that's right. That's how... Yeah, the uh, Dilfer. Let the Dilfer know. <laughs> uh, strong, strong warrior type here thinking about gladiator times. Yeah. Young warrior. <laughs> all right here speaking of warriors and tough guys uh hockey players also known to be really tough guys uh have a video of a coach getting his finger cut off on the glass so let's oh play this God. coach hops up on the glass and whoop! <laughs> you see that no that was his finger <laughs> so legend has no it that he catches on the glass and then it's fucking good night jim kite for finger banging very tough way to oh leave the finger God. banging game. But I will say, you know, he's with his boys, coaching kids, doing what he oh loves, so God. fucking ain't no better way to go. Dude. Oh, my God. What the fuck? How does Dude. that even happen? I, I, I never played hockey, but, Jerry, is that glass really is that, that sharp? Is that sharp? No, I've no. never seen anything Where like was this. this? What Dude, game was What it? the fuck oh, is I, this? I no this idea. is some minor <laughs> no. league bullshit. My, oh, my God. This is, dude, this is, like, not... Any great That's hockey horrible. league. I'm going to tell you, what the fuck just happened? That is horrible. Did you see that finger fly off? Yeah, how could you <laughs> Would not? Would plexiglass do that? Is it, I mean. I don't know what kind of glass that is. It's not plexiglass. It, it isn't. There's not plexiglass. Hockey glass is real glass? Yes. Oh, I didn't. 100%. That's how much I know about hockey. Bro, that guy's finger took a took a dive into the penalty box. Literally. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's scary, man. It's Stay not the penalty box. That just so. seems yeah, well, weird. Okay. Maybe it was a fake finger conspiracy. No, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't real, dude. I don't know. That's weird. I'd like to see much more, more of the video. It was a, it was a prosthetic. It wasn't real. That's an idea. I can tell you right now that was not. That's not the penalty box. That's <laughs> like where the box score is kept. <laughs> like I but still, like, why would the good. glass be that sharp? Why would they not? There's got to be some fucking stupid regulation out there that makes the glass like somehow filed dude if there's the even a, a little crack in the glass you have to put the whole game on pause right, and right. replace so it there's no way they're like uh, panes of glass there's it's not i don't know what the fuck happened in this situation but that is insane. that's weird that's insane it may be a prosthetic well, like that guy said, you know that guy, that coach's finger banging career—it's over with. Man. He's got to move. He's, he's got four more. He's got to switch hands or something. You only need three to do the shocker. So if you lose one, you still have four. That's right. I mean, yeah. Or you got to you got to switch up. You got to go lefty, or some people like to call that stranger. You know, depends on if you're right or left-handed. Isn't that with jerking off? Of? That's not what do you with, think, like, uh, finger banging, Adam. <laughs> I mean, that's that's. <laughs> look at his mic fun. right now, dude. Yo, put your mic down. No, look at the, you know, put the no, put the windscreen the down. The screen, push it down. What? I mean, that's fucked up. The no, screen, no. push it down. Just put the tap, muff. Tap, it's a the, muff. tap the top. The this the, yeah. the black the muff. Holy put it down. Shit. Push the muff down. No, the, the, oh, this, the this, yeah, this, yeah, this. They, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's cool. My, it's what did muff. you think about this man losing his finger? I mean, that's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't fucking play hockey. <laughs> or coach, uh, tough, tough guys. The guy just walked off, man. He's he's tough. Hockey players built different. I do wonder if it's a prosthetic finger, though. Conspiracy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right, I got another little story for you. Just uh, making a transition. Oh yeah. We have a Denver homeless encampment which offers a prostitution tent that are rentable 
for just about anyone. You don't have to be homeless to take part in this. And they also have a full bar where you can get some drinks as well. So you have the finest bottles of 175 Nikolai over there that you can get for about 10 bucks a jug. It's like Malibu and fucking Smirnoff <laughs> sponsoring this tent. <laughs> Only in Denver. I'm surprised this ain't in, like, Portland. <laughs> coming to coming soon in New York City. Or that's Seattle. All, that's I'm all just all throwing right. it out there. I support this. Even <laughs> the whole the homeless deserve that's, a good experience. That's, oh that's like that's like premium homeless right there. I feel like these guys are choosing to be homeless at this point. Like you could easily just have a house and do this. You don't need to be doing intense on a sidewalk. Yeah, like the I best know, part of the story is you don't have to be homeless to visit. No, you could just be a regular dude just trolling for some strange and you can just pull up to a ten on a sidewalk. I know you, you got you got no you got no rent, you got no mortgage, you can get Troll. some you can get some nice bottles. Trolling for some strange. I got I, I guess if you don't have a place and you're a beginner <laughs> pimp, this is a good way to start. Troll. You build your bankroll and then you could buy an apartment and then you could you keep leveling up. That's and then your, you level up to where you own a tent bar on the side of the road. That's your guys' next T-shirt is trolling for strange. <laughs> An after her exclusive Fucking shirt. Fucking one-liners by Dilphy over here. Yeah, like I said, if you're if you're a homeless pimp in Denver, maybe this is a way to build up. You start off oh on the streets God. in a tent. Then you you don't pay taxes, I'm assuming, because you you don't really have a house. You're or homeless. A of, or, You're a homeless. Or a source of income. So after you do this for a couple months, you got your you got your uh, girls in line. You're getting paid. Then you level up. You get an apartment. So you're off the street. You're a lot, level up. A lot cleaner now. So uh, <laughs> a lot cleaner now. So you could you know get classier. Was well, this like get rich or die trying Denver version? Like what? <laughs> and then once you, once you got your apartment. Then you can move on up. You get a full house. And then, you know, maybe you move out to Las Vegas and you get a bunny ranch. So, you know what? Maybe the pimps in Denver are onto something here. I love the hole in the in the chair. It looks like one of the, it's like because it looks like a nice chair, right? So they it's like this chair looks way too nice. We're homeless. We got to take a knife and poke this thing. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's like right in the center, like where your head would go. I mean, I guess you get privacy, and I do got to say, they do have a barrel there, so maybe they did a recent barrel pick uh, somewhere out in Colorado, so good for them. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, you Bro, gotta... I literally just spit shit up into my fucking I my mean, glass. I, I guess you got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> yes. Maybe they did a recent barrel pick. Where do you find this shit? Uh, this is actually out of the New York Post. Oh, of uh, course. Crime article. Um, oh, of course. I mean, no one ever said pimping was easy, so... He... <laughs> there's, there's levels to crime man <laughs> all right we're, we're moving along here and speaking of crime and someone who needs to go to jail uh we have dollar store ripoff riffraff out here smelling people's fingers in the street <laughs> i think this guy needs to go to jail <laughs> <laughs> nope that one just won't do honey that's a guy. The next person. Yeah, that's that's like, weird, man. Man. That was like a bloody. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. dude had like a bloody finger. They all had the last. Fingers. They all oh. did. So you had two girls with bloody fingers, and, and two then guys. two guys with bloody fingers, and this dude looking like uh, Walmart riffraff. That's uh, funny. Is just out here on the street corner, just sniffing fingers. On uh, face. <sighs> uh, this has got to be some sort of crime. I don't know what or what it would classify as, but this guy should be in jail for doing that. It's just wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong. It's just wrong. <laughs> but why are their fingers bloody? I, I don't know. Uh, Especially the guys. I don't, I don't want to speculate here, but ew, ew. Can we just talk about how much this guy looks like Riff Raff? Though he's got like. The Fu Manchu muzzy, muzzy. He's got the dyed blonde hair slicked back. Uh, lack- Show you how to be the man. He's lacking- how to be the boss. He doesn't have any Jordans on, so he's not tiptoeing in his Jordans, but he's got some boots on and some, you know, looks like American Eagle uh, high socks. They got the red, white, and blue and the eagle on there, so at least he's patriotic about whatever crime he's committing. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think this guy, he's sniffing fingers out on a street corner. Something is definitely illegal here, and he should probably be sent to jail. Like, if you saw this on patrol, Jerry, what would you do? Uh, yeah, I have to say, you know, I'm at least taking him for discon. Uh, that's <laughs> disorderly if I ever seen it. Um, not a big fan of this man. 
uh, some kind of crime is occurring. I don't know what it is, but uh, we're definitely going to get uh, SVU involved in some way or form. I yeah, just always want to know the context of this stuff. Like, we just see a small portion of it, and I just always want to know the context of the whole thing. It's wild. This is what's great about the Afterhurt, man. We just get to speculate, <laughs> and Jeez. we get to come up with our own reasons. I mean, I guess this could totally be an innocent like thing going on, but I highly doubt it. Very weird. Something's not. Something. This is probably happening on the streets of Denver. Very weird. All right, guys. But uh, this guy should be sent to jail. Let us know what you think about the conspiracy of the week. Uh, text us or you know comment on your early two thousand. Yeah, memories. yeah. Text Caleb. Let's give out his <laughs> personal text number Caleb. right give now. Number. <laughs> Let's give his personal <laughs> don't, number out. Don't do. That. You can DM me if you want that. <laughs> text the Dilf. Hey, you never know what <laughs> services this pimp provides. In Denver. <laughs> In Denver. <laughs> All right, but guys, just as always, make sure you're watching these after herfs on YouTube because you're going to want to see the pictures, going to want to see the clips, uh, going to want to see our beautiful guest's face and how dapper they're always dressed. Um, as you know, Make sure you're following the Facebook, the Instagram, the TikTok as well. Uh, just let us know what you think. Leave some comments. Leave some love. Uh, we appreciate the grower gangs. You guys are all growing very well, and uh, we're growing as well, so uh, we appreciate that. Uh, Jerry, anything else to close, and uh, you guys as well before we end things? Uh, I just want to thank Jake and Adam for coming on the After Earth show with us. Obviously, this is pretty funny. Uh, seeing and reacting to these clips isn't always easy. Uh, if you're listening to us audio only, make sure you're checking us out on a Cigar Hustler Podcast Network, the number one cigar podcast on Podbean. Um <clears throat> Guys, thanks for coming on. Jake, it's always a pleasure to have you. Adam, it's always also a pleasure to have you. Um, dude, you guys are welcome here anytime. So anything you guys want to close with? Let's start with Jake. Yeah, just just cheers, gentlemen. I appreciate you guys always having me on. I always love being on here, down to her podcast in Buffalo, New York. Um, no, I just appreciate it. If you want to follow uh, Crowned Heads, Crowned Heads Cigars, the Crowned Heads on Instagram. Um I think they're. I think we're on Twitter as well. But my handle, if you want to follow all my visits and all my crazy travels, it's Jake's with an S underscore Finer Life. Always appreciate being able to share a glass and share a cigar with the guys. And obviously, you don't get to do this all the time. So, but I greatly appreciate it. And I appreciate uh, Smokers Haven and Adam and all the support that you guys have done uh, with Crowned Heads. And look forward to doing more business with you. Yeah, awesome. Definitely appreciate you too. Uh love working with Crowned Heads. Uh love being on the show. It's always fun. Uh if if you want to check out more stuff from Smokers Haven, uh just check out Smokers Haven WNY. You'll find our pages. Um and uh always appreciate it. Always have fun on here. So thanks guys. That being said, Caleb, take it away, bud. Sayonara, grower gang. Peace. <laughs>